Hey everyone, it's Phil from Walmart. It is July 7th, which is what today is Wednesday. Yesterday was Tuesday. I always have to think about it because I start my week in a different day. So I have to think about what day it is sometimes. Um, but I know it's the 7th because I was writing the 7th on all my paperwork today. Um, give you an idea of how my day has gone today. So I started my day in Red Bluff, California. And they gave me a load going to Roseville, California. And it was just a... Uh, at a Red Bluff, Red Bluff is our general merchandise loads. And most of the time it's loose loaded inside but uh, there are times that it's palletized and if it's palletized usually it's more than one store so that's a good thing uh, like it was on Saturday at a Red Bluff I had two stores that I delivered to in Vacaville but uh, today at a Red Bluff it was just one store and I arrived there at the store there was a, another driver there with a reefer and I it was hauling a dry box so the, he was unready in one dock. There was another trailer. It didn't belong to Walmart, but it was there. I'm not sure what they're using it for. Uh, and then there was a Walmart trailer on the third dock. And um, so I wasn't sure which dock I was going to use. There's only three docks. Uh, do I wait for him uh, and, and everything? Uh, but I can't leave the docks triple docked. In this case, it would have been triple docked. Uh, not an open dock anywhere. Um, I could have waited for him, but instead I decided to um, move my loaded trailer out of the way, pull the empty out, back my loaded one in, and then recouple to the empty trailer to uh, take to McCarran here in Nevada. Uh, so when you're doing that, you're 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 getting the arrival and the drop um, at the store and then you're getting a hook for the empty that you're taking now what about that extra move I did so on our system there is a uh, option to uh, undock trailer uh, from the, the dock so I coded one of those and uh, that'll give me uh, I don't know how much that is um, but it gives me an activity and uh, everything's good so got on the road started heading up I cr created a short little video earlier today but um, driving up I-80 East found there was an accident and they diverted traffic they there was a sign that closed traffic uh, the roads closed and we're turning around traffic so they turned us around just at Baxter, California. So got off, went across the overpass, got back on, going westbound. And I immediately went to a location that I knew of uh, from my mentoring. If, if I didn't have a mentor and he didn't show me where that place was, I probably wouldn't even know it was there. Um, it's a little gas station and it's got a dirt lot. That you can park uh, I want to say 15 20 tractors maybe depending on how close they are um, but uh, and trailers um, so it's not it's not huge but it, if you get there early enough it works out so I got there early enough and uh, there's a bunch of other Walmart drivers there as well and more just keep coming um, so we finally got a message from Walmart DC in uh, McCarran who was keeping track of the traffic situation on I-80 and there was a message that said okay one lane is now open and I was just ready honestly I I'd set my alarm I was gonna take a power nap and I should have taken one earlier but I was gonna take a power nap and then I got the message and so I decided do I get up right now is traffic gonna be horrible what do I do do I just get in it now and, and worry about it or am I gonna be in stop-and-go traffic anyway should I wait here well 
I made a decision to go. And so I got going and then, uh, of course, I uh, reached the top of Donner Pass at the summit and uh, I needed to use the facilities, so I stopped. And then looking at my time, I needed to get my second meal in. So you had to get the second meal in and uh, then I started heading down the pass, got to McCarran, dropped my empty, uh, checked my board, and sure enough, I had a dispatch. Went in to get the paperwork, and it was a meat and produce load, a reefer, and I was looking at it. I'm not familiar with all the store numbers, so I don't have those committed to memory unless I've been there a couple times. And so I turned around right away and said I need the agricultural paperwork to go back into California. And she's like, no, 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 those are for here in Reno. And, and I'm like, okay, perfect. So I went, got the trailer, found the trailer and booked it out the door, uh, trying to get these uh, two meat and produce uh, stores delivered tonight. Mind you, I only had, after all that, uh, about two hours on my clock. Uh, I think I left at uh, 8, 10, 8 something, I'd have to look. But um, I clocked in at uh, 8.25 this morning. So right there, I'm already at the 12 hour mark. So I only had 12 hours to get, or two hours to get to these stores and get them to offload it expeditiously and move to the next store, get them to offload that. And I was still gonna try to make it back to McCarran. Uh, I decided against that. I, I've i already been in those situations where I'm pushing it, pushing it, pushing it to the last second and then uh, getting off. Um, this time I said, you know what, after he got done, I'm just gonna go ahead and pretend I leave, depart or leave but then go right on to layover. Uh, that way it shows that I left and um, and I'm on my way back to McCarran, but I'm not gonna be there till, till later, uh, tomorrow morning, uh, to deliver the empty trailer and get a new dispatch going out. What I wanted to talk about, and the reason I'm talking about this in, in such depth of my day today is because as I was going as I was sitting in Dutch flat, waiting for traffic and waiting for them to open up the freeway again, I updated what we call an ETD. Uh, you go into the system and you tell, as a driver, based on the dispatch what they gave you, you tell them based on mileage, how long it's gonna take, how long it's gonna take at each store, and then you give them an ETD of when you're going to leave that next location, meaning the final location, your DC, that you're reporting back to for a ne your next load. So in this case, I was dispatched at a Red Bluff, Red Bluff to Roseville, Roseville to McCarran. So before leaving Red Bluff, I had to update my ETD as if I was going to do everything, drive to Roseville, deliver the uh, goods, train the tra uh, trailer, then drive to McCarran, drop the trailer, find my next trailer, and then get out the door. What's my estimated time of departure from McCarran based on all that? Not traffic included, not, not, not an accident that shuts down the freeway. This is just a good day driving and normal conditions, what it should take to get there. So I think I had my ETD, uh, I left Red Bluff around 9 something, 9.30 almost. Uh, like I said, I clocked in at 8.25, uh, didn't have a dispatch, had to call uh, Bentonville. They said I had a calendar event for the windshield and they had to remove that in order to give me a dispatch. Then they gave me that dispatch when I got low load. So it took a little bit of time for me to get out of there. Uh, I want to say it was just about an hour, maybe less. And then I got on road. And I was at Roseville store by noon. Um, so not bad time. Not bad time. Um, 
but I was there, I think I left at 9.30 and I think I, I got to Roseville. I know I got to Roseville at noon because it's on my paperwork. Um, but, um, and then I was estimating from Roseville another uh, two and a half hours or so to get over the hill, another uh, half an hour meal, uh, then uh, an hour in the DC to get my new trailer, drop this trailer, get my new trailer and get my paperwork and get out. So I think I had an ETD of 430. Well, with all that, with the dis with the traffic, you while you're in route, as long as you're not dispatched on anything else new, you can go in and update your ETD. And then uh, based on, hey, I'm on the side of the road, I got a mechanical problem, or hey, uh, traffic shut down the freeway and I am stuck here and let me update my ETD and so I initially went in there and updated my ETD for uh, 630 giving it two hours to clear that traffic um, then it hadn't cleared so I went back in and updated again for 730 and so I didn't pull out of the DC I didn't get into the DC till around 730 um, based on my meal and, and other things I had to take because of the, the long length of, of time. And I didn't account for the meal that I had to take up on the summit um, on my ETD because, well, frankly, I forgot I had to take it. And it wasn't until I got to the summit that I was like looking at the time going, oh, I didn't calculate that into the ETD. Well, okay, well, that's fine. Um, why am I talking about this? The ETD goes to Bentonville uh, to the dispatchers and at that point they're going to dispatch you what they think that you can do in that time frame that you have left. Now if you have several hours left then they'll give you something good I think. I don't know how it works but they give you something um, and they want to give you something that's ready to go when you get there. Right? So a good ETD is is vital to getting your load and not waiting for your load. I'm telling you, I don't wait for my loads because I usually come in pretty good on my ETDs. And how do I do it? Well, it, it as a new rookie driver for Walmart, I'm having to learn how long it takes to do certain things at different stores and how long it takes to get from point A to point B from this store to that store and I keep going to new stores so I can't even really judge I have to go well the last time I went to no I didn't go to this store last time I, I can't remember because I don't I don't go to the same stores all the time uh, the store I'm at now I'm overnighted in and lay, shut down right now at I, I was here I had a load from Red Bluff to here and then from here I went to uh, McCarran and then continued out throughout the day doing other things. Now, that's, if you're doing the same routine, you get to know how long it's gonna take average from here to there. So you just, you really gotta base it based on what? The mileage, right? How long will it take you normally to get from point A to point B if it was 143 miles? 143 miles well we here at Walmart try to use the average uh, miles per hour speed of 50 miles per hour as our calculator at least that's the way I was taught I, I think it's a good way to, to use is the 50 mile an hour because if you're coming up the pass uh, sometimes you might be going 55 sometimes you might be going 35 so you're gonna take the average right and so with 143 that's three hours at 50 miles an hour and then you if you started your day at 830 like I did um, and you left at 930 and you're talking three hours that's put it put you there at 1230 that's four hours into your day so you're getting close to your meal so you got to think about a meal so you got to put in a half an hour for a meal so that is now uh, da, 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 1230 one o'clock right and then you get uh, the time to get from from there to the next uh, location which was McCarran 
and from that store to McCarran is another 137 miles. And again, that's about uh, two, just not three, but two and a half, I would say, uh, two and a half hours uh, to get over the hill to McCarran. And I say that because once you're in Nevada, the speed limit goes up. Yeah, gets to go up. The only thing is we're uh, governed to 65 miles an hour on our tractors. So you can't go the, the, the total speed limit, but we get to go at least 65. Um, so um, that's why I'm saying it's two and a half rather than the uh, full three hours. And then, um, so that's how I do my ETDs. And um, now part of the ETDs is figuring out how many hours you have left to drive for the day. Now, depending on how long you've been at the stores or how long you think you're going to be at the stores because some stores are more expeditious with it other stores take a little longer we usually say at a store it depends on how many pallets you have like on on this i had 12 pallets for one store 13 pallets for the other store i usually calculate at least a half an hour to 45 minutes to an hour at the store it just depends because because sometimes you got to get them to open the door they can't find somebody with the key and then um, so I usually calculate that at the DC's it, it again it depends the DC's are big so depending on where you have to drop your trailer pick your trailer go get your paperwork like Red Bluff huge compared I mean it, it's it's there's there's so much parking and then the dispatch office is way on the other side of the building so by the time you park your empty, you can see in your board what trailer you're going to have if it's already dispatched, but you don't know exactly where it's parked. Are you going to go search a thousand trailers for that one trailer? Or do you want to narrow it down for a zone? Because they don't put pad numbers, they don't use pad numbers, they use zones. So zones a b c d e f g h i j k l and so they'll tell you what zone roughly it's in hopefully it's in that zone not always in that zone uh but usually it's pretty close to that zone if it's not in that zone um but yeah so you have to drive all the way over to the dispatch office to get your paperwork to find out where the trailer is or what zone the trailer is in. Okay, so then in Red Bluff, there's it's all dry. Uh, there's no reefers. It's all general merchandise, so there's no reefers coming out of Red Bluff. So it's pretty easy. Now you go get your trailer. They give you the, the bill of lading and it tells you how much it is, but you still got to weigh it, right? You still got to get on the scales and see, at least I do, I like to see where it's distributed. Is it distributed more on my drive axles or are they more distributed more on the, uh, the tandems on the trailer? Or is it pretty even? Uh, I, like to ha I like to know. So you find your trailer, you pre-trip your trailer, now you got to go to the scale, scale it. And then finally you can head towards the gate the outbound gate so that takes time so depending on how efficient you are it, it, you can get in and out about an hour uh, and to fuel because like when I got to McCarran when I got to McCarran after coming from Red Bluff I normally would fuel and because I'm usually going right back over the hill, back to the, the Central Valley area, or the Bay Area, or somewhere over there, over the hill. When she said I was going to two local stores, I didn't need to fuel my tractor, because I know I'm coming straight back to, uh, after I'm done with those two stores. And I knew I had a reefer, and I kept my fingers crossed that it had more than three quarters fuel in order to get out the gate without having to fuel it. 
they don't let you out the gate uh, and the uh, guards there the uh, asset protection they they check the reefers to make sure that three quarters full so that you have enough fuel to keep the goods and the products at the right temperature right so even though again we are professional truck drivers right if it's half a tank do you think we're not gonna stop and get it topped off anyway that's beside the point it, it keeps us from having to stop three quarters of a tank usually you can go all the way to Fresno or wherever you can you can take it pretty far uh, on three quarters of a tank we all know that but that's what they want you can take it all the way to Fresno on a half a tank but it is what it is so get there my point is each DC is a little bit different I go into McCarran I know I got a fuel I got to fuel my tractor and I don't fuel my tractor until I check and see what my dispatch is because if my dispatch is a reefer I'm not fueling the tractor until I get the reefer because if the reefer needs fuel why would I go fuel the tractor then go get the reefer and then have to get back in the fuel line again be smart go get your reefer check it then take the whole thing over to the fuel island and fuel all three or all three tanks your passenger side your driver's side and your reefer tank but if it's a dry trailer I'll go right to go fuel my tractor by itself after I drop my trailer and off I go go get my dry box and out the door I'm gone get my paperwork and I'm out uh, I hope this is helping somebody that is new and hopefully they're finding the channel uh, when they're new and not after they've learned all this but um, the mentor should go over all this with you as well but if they're not comment down below I'll answer any questions again I'm a rookie uh, I have not even two months in yet I, just over two months now and uh, so I'm still learning too but it kind of felt good last night there was a McCarran driver up in Red Bluff and he never goes to Red Bluff he, he's he's got more longevity than I do and he didn't know what the paperwork was for the general merchandise uh, bill of lading and everything he's never seen it before I guess his mentor never took him to Red Bluff um, my mentor made sure that my mentors they made sure that they took me or had them dispatch us to different locations so that we can so I can see the different things such as a vendor such as going to McCarran such as going to Red Bluff to, to, to go wash the tractor and how to wash the tractor at the Blue Beacon on our account um, to well fueling I already knew how to fuel but where to fuel how to fuel our tractors and kind of gave me that little tidbit about reefers about not fueling the tractor until you get the reefer so that way you're not wasting time um, everything to make it more efficient and uh, try to get you on road again um, but I want to give you an idea if you hustle like I did tonight and I got that trailer out of McCarran and I got it and I delivered it and and I'm done activity means a lot right we keep talking about activity you'll you'll listen to uh, the other folks out, out there that are, are putting videos together mileage is good you need a good mix of mileage and activity mileage plus activity the better the activities the better your paycheck or at least for that day is now if you getting good activities and good mileage a good mixture of both on all five days your checks are going to be really good you'll be very happy um, so give you an idea yesterday I got a trailer empty brought it to McCarran McCarran gave me a trailer going to Reading a load going to Reading took it all the way to Reading dropped it off grabbed an empty 
came to went to Red Bluff and I ended up with 430 miles. Now there wasn't a whole lot of activity, right? So I hooked in Sacramento. I arrived, dropped in McCarran, hooked in McCarran, went to Redding, I arrived, dropped there, hooked there, and then went to Red Bluff and dropped. Okay, so basically three and three plus 430 miles. Today, because of the the shutdown on the highway, I ended up with like 320, like 100 less miles, basically 100 less miles than what I did yesterday. But I was able to go to three stores, arrive, drop, arrive, live unload, come here, stop, live unload, you know, all those things. I told you I moved a trailer. I made more money today on less mileage than I did yesterday on all that mileage that I did because I didn't have a whole lot of activity to go with it. I still made good money. Don't get me wrong. I mean, uh, it was a little over uh, $335 for yesterday, but today ended up with almost, almost $400 for today. Less mileage. So activity means things. So try to get on the good side of somebody. Say, hey, can you increase my activity, please? I would like to have some more activity. It's none of all this mileage. Mileage is good, but can I get some activity in there to break it up? Uh, the guy I share the tractor with, he was in our other shared tractor, and I talked to him yesterday. He had a load with four, tra four a, a trailer with four, four drops in it. Oh, you want to switch? I'll take that. You take this tractor to to uh, to Red Bluff. Get the new windshield put in. Uh, man, I I want I I want trailers with four loads because that's activity. That is activity. Every time you arrive, uh, live unload, arrive unload, or stop. First one's an arrive. The next one's a, plus a live unload. The next one's a stop plus a live unload so on and so on so he's got three stops one one arrive and four live unloads off of one trailer that's activity that's gonna be that's gonna be a good check or at least good day for that right so um, anyway like subscribe comment down below from right lane trucking this is Phil Walmart I'm gonna Finish eating my snacks and uh, head to the bed and get up in the morning to start again. Everyone stay safe. Thank you.